I'm Amanda from Amy Creek Farm in Sunbury and this is my short presentation Make Your Own Kombucha Tea, Probiotic Yogurt and Sauerkraut. Hi, I'm Amanda from Amy Creek Farm in Sunbury and I've been empowering others to make their own organic fermented food and drinks for nearly five years now. I run workshops in Sunbury in Melbourne's northwest and I have created several online courses on related subjects to fermentation. I'm always looking for new ways to preserve food and enhance biodigestibility, reduce costs and improve our family's health. I hope you enjoy my video and I can educate and inspire you to improve your gut health with living probiotic foods. This presentation will run for approximately 20 minutes and down the bottom of this presentation you will be able to follow the links to my Facebook page and online courses and download several resource sheets to use at home to make yogurt, kombucha and ginger beer. Enjoy! So what's fermentation? Fermentation is the digestive action of microorganisms on food or drinks. And for beginners, I recommend that you purchase fermentation starter cultures because they assist to easily start the fermentation process in the preparation of various foods and fermented drinks. And many different starter cultures are commercially available and some we'll be talking about today. Now, probiotics are microorganisms that provide health benefits when consumed and they aid in human health by providing the body with good bacteria that eliminate or displace bad bacteria from the body. And today probiotics are the fastest growing sector of the nutritional market. To get more information about probiotics I recommend that you watch the Catalyst program because they've had some really good episodes lately and they've done their best to explain why bacteria are important in gut health and how your microbiome can be an indicator of your diet in a nutshell. Recent scientific studies have proven links to cholesterol, immune function, weight and upper respiratory infections and they've shown that people that take probiotics on a regular basis in foods or as a supplement have improved levels of psychological, um, psychological stability, less depression, anger, hostility, anxiety and better problem solving skills. Other benefits of probiotics include helping to control irritable bowel disease and Crohn's disease and reducing the incidence of antibiotic resistant diarrhea and other digestive complaints. Also recent studies have shown 40% less colds and flu in athletes when they took a probiotic. Examples of fermented foods include yogurt, miso, sauerkraut, sourdough, cultured vegetables, kimchi, soy sauce and of course ginger beer. My tips for new probiotic makers are to start with one starter culture, to invest in some new jars that you clean and wash thoroughly and prepare your unchlorinated water, so boiled cooled water in advance and make sure that you have enough materials at home to feed your culture for a week. If any mould or contamination comes into your culture, please make sure that you throw it out. In the first few times that you make a culture, it's difficult to know what's safe and what's not, and always change your jars frequently. Make sure that you have some starter culture that's put aside in the fridge, clearly labelled and dated as a backup, in case you do encounter contamination in the first couple of times. And of course having a reliable test kit and someone who's able to support you will help you to be more successful. If you have other health problems it's always important to document what days you start taking a new fermented food so that you can go back and have a look in the diary in case you have any health concerns or have an interaction with any other medication that you're taking. So it's important to write down what you're doing and even remind yourself on certain days of the week when you've got a change or when you've got to feed a culture. Remember that the compounds produced by these bacteria or yeast are biologically active. And if you have anything like a Hertzheimer reaction 
where you feel symptoms of a cold or flu a day or two after taking something for the first time, particularly a kefir, then it's a good idea to stop taking that cold cha. Kombucha is made from fermenting tea and the best way to make it is to use a combination of green and black tea so that you get the sweet taste and benefits of enhanced brain activity from the green tea and the full body flavour of the black tea. It's a highly acidic beverage which has been reported to cleanse the blood and the liver and it has a detoxifying effect and is great for those people who are sensitive to dairy products. On a chemical level, kombucha contains glucuronic acid which can bind toxins and remove them from your body via your kidneys. It's also reported to help with weight loss, allergies, boosting your immune system and helping with joint and digestive problems and also it's a great replacement for fizzy drinks because it is carbonated. To start making your own culture, someone will need to give you or sell you their mother. The mother is the circular disc or scoby that grows or floats on the top of the culture and you can see one in my preserving jar in the picture. Once you have one of these mothers or scobies, you can grow litres and litres of kombucha by following a very simple recipe. The culture is Saccharomyces cerevisiae and Glucoacetobacter xylanus. So the recipe is that you use one scoby with 100 ml of cooled fermented kombucha tea, which comes from your scoby provider, and it's added to one fresh sweet tea brew that has been cooled down. Now the sweet tea brew should contain two tea bags, one green tea bag and one black tea bag with a quarter of a teaspoon of sugar in it and a one litre water in a vessel that's at least one and a half litres in size and you can see that I've used a 1.5 litre preserving jar. First you make the sweet tea, you let it cool down and then you put the scoby in with the 100 ml of starter tea that you got from the same person that gave you the scoby and you let all of that ferment for at least three days depending on temperature and remember to taste it after that time and you can keep fermenting for up to two weeks but I don't recommend going any further than 10 days myself because it does become highly acidic with a pH of around 3. Now I test my kombucha by tasting it after I've used a pH strip and I don't drink anything that's close to a pH of 4 or less. That's my personal preference. So the scoby divides as it grows and it makes a new scoby every few weeks and these scobies can be stored together in their own fermented tea or which is now vinegar and that's called a kombucha hotel. When you're making kombucha it's a very good idea to use a large glass or a ceramic vessel and cover the top with a breathable cloth. That can be a tea towel or some other cloth so that oxygen can get through for the organism. You shouldn't use iron, aluminium or copper vessels because kombucha is acidic. You don't want any other chemical reactions going on in your brew and you'll hear some people say not to use metal and metal is okay if it is stainless steel but if it's plated metal it's a good idea to avoid it because you don't want to poison anyone. Kombucha and vinegar organisms they don't like light so it's a good idea to do your brew in a dark cupboard or to cover the vessel with a cloth to stop the light getting in. If the area is warm or it's summer you'll find that the fermentation process will occur faster than it does in winter. And again with kombucha if you get any headaches or dizziness or strange effects please stop drinking it and it's a good idea to start with a very small dose when you're first trying kombucha and then you can build up the quantity. So it's not a good idea to have a whole glass when you're just starting out. Kombucha does produce a small amount of alcohol, probably around 1%. That's from the yeasts in the Acetobacter. They can produce alcohol. So just a word of warning that that's in there, but it's not enough to make you tipsy. 
This kombucha chai recipe includes cloves, cinnamon and fresh ginger and it's always an outstanding success at any of my kombucha making workshops. Other fruits listed here are particularly good for flavouring kombucha but you should only leave them in for a couple of days and then take them out with a strainer. You'll find that all of the vitamins and minerals in the fruits will become bioavailable. The best way for beginners to make probiotic yogurt is to add a freeze-dried bacterial culture to milk which can be dairy or non-dairy and I've been amazed by the number of participants who have come into my workshops and started making coconut and soy milk yogurts and they then use them in an infinite variety of ways some of which you'll see here and even going on to filter the yogurt to make cream cheese so there's plenty of ideas that you can come up with on Google and these are some beautiful photos taken by my friend Emily. We're now going to talk about how to make your own non-dairy yogurt culture because this is the area that most people ask me about. When you're making dairy yogurt, many people have had experience in doing this themselves and perhaps even using commercial varieties such as Bornhofen to make more or larger quantities of yogurt but this can be very hit and miss. So for beginners I recommend to use freeze-dried cultures and I'll go through the example of how to make your own non-dairy yogurt. Um, what you need to do when you're making yogurt is always heat the milk to between 37 and 43 degrees on the stove in a saucepan and make sure that you've got a thermometer to check the temperature before you add the yogurt, freeze-dried yogurt culture. One thing that you may not know is that the yogurt cultures depend on sugar as their food source so you should always add one tablespoon of sugar if you're making non-dairy yogurt and this is for the culture to eat and to allow it to thicken properly. Now if you're using a thin milk, um, particularly coconut milk, you should use one teaspoon of pectin and the pectin will allow your culture to thicken properly and you'll get a nice setting yogurt. If you're using almond milk you may also need the pectin because that can also be a thin milk but soy milk generally doesn't require it. It just requires the one tablespoon of sugar. Now you might be a bit alarmed to think about putting sugar in your yogurt because that might be the reason that you want to make your own but what you'll find is is that that sugar will be consumed by the culture before you go to eat it. So there won't be any sugar left in your yogurt when you're consuming it. Now once you've done all of this you need to maintain the temperature either using a yogurt incubator, a yogurt maker, a thermos or a thermomix and you should allow that temperature to be maintained for around 10 to 18 hours. And so various brands of milk can taste different and produce a different consistency in your yogurt. If you want more information about yogurt making, I recommend that you have a look at my online course because I go through the stages of making dairy yogurt and non-dairy yogurt in separate chapters in detail. And I talk about all the problems that you can have and explain properly about why you need to add sugar, when you need to add sugar and the pectin. So, And I've got a variety of recipes on there as well. Um, and then I also talk about how to make Matsoni yogurt, um, which doesn't require any heating and the proper procedure for that so that you can then strain it and make perfect cream cheese. So I've got a lot of information that I'm just glossing over in this presentation to explain how to make different types of yogurt and what you can do for them and to have really perfect tasting coconut yogurt so it's almost as good as Koyo. One of my favourite things to do in winter is to make cultured vegetables or sauerkraut. So sauerkraut is fermented cabbage and it uses the process of lactic fermentation so lactic acid that's present in the cabbage to and the micro action of microorganisms to pre-digest the cabbage into simpler substances and one of those is a huge quantity of vitamin C. 
So I use the sauerkraut and the cultured vegetables as side dishes with my meals and I find that that reduces the incidence of colds in my family over winter. So you'll notice now in shops that cultured vegetables and sauerkrauts are almost $10 to $15 a jar. But you'll find that you can make them yourself using your own organic produce um, at home and it's very, very easy to do. What I recommend to do is to use a vegetable culture rather than anything else or, or salt or brine to produce your sauerkraut. Um, I use the best culture possible which is Green Living Australia. It's a freeze dried culture and you're using a tiny, tiny quantity so that when you buy the freeze dried culture you can make up to 100 or 200 litres even um, of cultured vegetables or sauerkraut. So what I would do is get onto the greenlivingaustralia.com.au website if you want to order that and you'll be able to follow the procedures with there so that you get exactly the right quantity to add for the exact quantity of vegetables that you're going to be preserving. So the things that you need to remember when you're making cultured vegetables are to chop up your vegetables very finely and to pack them down into your vessel or your crock to exclude as much air as possible. Some people can use um, a spoon or use their fists but just packing them down means that um, that you're not getting air into there and it's less likely for mold to form in your sauerkraut. What you should do is mix up your culture, the quantity of culture that you've got in your instructions into half a cup of, of water and that water needs to be boiled and cooled to remove the chlorine. So you do that beforehand before you start chopping up your vegetables and then you add that culture and water mix to your vegetables and you keep your water level high in the vessel and then you keep packing down the cabbages and the spices that you're going to use and then you put some extra cabbage leaves on the top of the vessel and that excludes air from getting in and then you put the seal on it. If you've got a airlock that's a perfect way of doing it as well because that will prevent air from getting into the vessel but it allows any CO2 that's produced by the organism to get out. Now you just need to keep this crock somewhere warm for three to seven days to allow it to ferment and then before you know it you can test it and see that you've got some really lovely uh, fermented vegetables or sauerkraut and cabbage in there. I also use Brussels sprouts, cauliflower and root vegetables like carrots, ginger and sweet potato. One other thing to remember about cultured vegetables is that um, you're using the action of fermentation but some people also use pickling which means that they might use the carrot and put it directly into vinegar and add some ginger. You'll see a picture of this on the next slide but remember that this isn't um, fermented vegetables unless the vinegar itself has got the live organism in there. In the slide here you can see a recipe for how to make home fermented sauerkraut and you can also see a picture of my homemade kimchi and my also um, karaut culture with ginger. Now if you want to have a look at my online courses I have details about how to use the Green Living Australia vegetable culture to produce the kimchi, cultured vegetables and sauerkraut and there's lots of other recipes, tips and tricks in my online course for sauerkraut and fermented vegetables. I hope you've enjoyed my presentation today. For more information, tips and tricks using probiotic cultures, please check out our online courses at teachable.com and follow us on Facebook at Emu Creek Farm Sunbury. Thank you.